I'm sure you've already heard by now. You're probably still crying from the betrayal. Joe Rogan has gone too far this time. He's attacked gamers. As a fan of Joe Rogan, and more importantly as a gamer, an elite gaming barbarian with gamer gunk in the veins, I had to tear down every photograph I had of Joe Rogan framed, every poster off my walls. I destroyed my Joe Rogan effigy, I blew out my Joe Brogan candle, and I'm just wiping my hands of this guy, because it's just disgusting what he said about gamers. Joe Rogan could go on his podcast, bend over, and give himself an enema with my grandfather's ashes, and I would still find a way to forgive and support him. Just laugh it off, but what he's done to gamers gamers what he said about us it's just it's unforgivable let me show you the clip video games are a real problem they're a real problem you know why because they're fucking fun Addictive. and you don't yeah well I'm, i have a real problem with them and you 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 do them and they're real exciting but you don't get anywhere right it's like you could do like like martial arts right you could learn jujitsu you get obsessed by jujitsu, and then three years later, you're you're like an elite jujitsu athlete. You're like you're entering in competitions. You're a purple belt. You're moving up. Yeah, you're doing well. Right. You're thinking like I might be able to open my own school one you day. You got confidence. Yeah, if I have a hundred students and those hundred students are paying me X amount of dollars per month, I can make a living. Or you could just be playing fucking video games. Three years later, you could be that same kid just playing video games, waiting for the next Vix, whatever the fuck game is, you know, next Xbox game to come out and you're gonna waste your time. I know you've already seen the clip on Twitter and I don't mean to open the wound again and pour salt on it and take a piss on it, but you needed to see it for the context for anyone that doesn't know. I mean, this this right here, this is a declaration of war, a war on gamers. Now, Twitter would have you believe this statement from Joe Rogan made the earth stop rotating. It was so powerful and evil that all the good in the world all at once just vanished because Joe said these things. Now, I want to talk about this because I think it's blown way out of proportion. Not that I think his point is any good here, it's still dog shit and it's just kind of a stupid thing to say. He goes on to clarify a bit further about, you know, people told him he could never do comedy because no one makes it in comedy and then he proved them all wrong. So basically what he's saying is, you have to be the best in the world at a game that has the staying power to stay a popular game to make it as a gamer or make a career out of gaming. Basically the whole thing equates to, Gaming doesn't necessarily guarantee you money, and since it doesn't guarantee you money, it's not a good use of time. Which is obviously just a fucked up thing to say. Just because something doesn't guarantee you money doesn't mean you've wasted your time by doing it if you've enjoyed doing it. And he's just outright wrong. Gaming is probably the most viable career for the majority of people in the world thanks to something called streaming. I don't know if Joe is familiar with what streaming is, maybe he's still stuck like a Neanderthal in caves banging two rocks together for entertainment, I'm not really sure. But streaming is accessible to everyone in the world with a computer. By gaming, you can make a career out of streaming, and you don't have to be the best in the world at the game to have a streaming career. You, fuck, I mean, you don't have to be good at a game to have a career as a streamer. But you do have to be among the top 1% in the world to make it as a professional athlete and make a career out of sports. In Joe's example, he talks about martial arts. You know, you do martial arts for three years, then you're an elite martial artist, and hey, maybe you open a dojo and make a career that way. Well, that's three fucking years of doing nothing. Isn't that kind of a waste of time by your own criteria, Joe? They spent three years doing martial arts for free, and in fact, losing money because they're paying for the classes, for the very slim chance that they open a dojo, which isn't very easy. You have to already be financially secure, and you have to get lucky, and you have to get a bunch of students. He says a hundred students. Well, it's a lot harder to get a hundred students to a brick and mortar martial art, brick and mortar martial arts facility than it is to get a hundred viewers online from playing a game, even at a mediocre level. It's a lot more difficult. So, and using Joe Rogan's criteria, everything can be boiled down to a waste of time, especially sports. Less than 1% of everyone who plays sports will make a career out of sports. You have to be an absolute fucking freak. One, literally some of the best human beings in the world in those categories to make a career out of that path. So every time you're playing basketball, playing football, playing soccer, like recreationally or even part of a small league, and you're not making money, you're wasting your time by Joe Rogan's, by Joe Rogan's gauge here. And I'd argue it's a much bigger waste of your time using Joe Rogan's metrics because you most likely are not going to make it as a professional athlete. It is so incredibly slim, the chance of you making it as a professional athlete. But the chance of you making it as a streamer is significantly higher because of how many people are watching streams and just the accessibility of it. You don't have to be the best in the world. You genuinely don't even have to be good at games to make it as a streamer. As long as you can entertain a crowd or just be there for people that just want to watch someone casually, 
you can have a career there. So it's a lot easier and a lot more accessible to make a career out of your video game obsession than it is your sports and martial arts obsession. His point just isn't very good, but I don't think he's entirely wrong with what he's talking about, where if you dedicate your life every single day, every moment of your free time is dedicated to playing a game with no other dreams of streaming it or you know taking it further to a professional level like an esports organization or something, then yes, you're a little worse off than the people that are obsessed with sports that'll never make it because at least with sports you're a lot more physically active in your life, you're developing some more social skills around people in the world, and you're probably just living a healthier lifestyle in general compared to the guy that's just snorting Doritos like cocaine and playing Fortnite nine hours a day with nothing else that they want to do. But to be honest, I don't even know if that's the point he's making because I don't think he even registered streaming as a possibility. I think in Joe's mind, the only way to make a career out of gaming is being the best in the world at a game and making it to a professional esports organization level. I think Joe equates gaming to the same level as professional athletes where only the top 1% make it because he hasn't registered streaming as a viable career. Even though streaming is one of the most lucrative careers there is, the most accessible careers out there, and it's just genuinely something that anyone can do and find a lot of success with. No matter your upbringing, no matter your talent level, as long as you can find an audience, as long as you can just get out there, you have a very good chance of making it where you can't say that same thing about any other path in the world, especially fucking sports and martial arts like Joe keeps saying. I don't get how Joe has this disconnect where he's saying you do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for three years and then maybe open a dojo with a hundred students as if that's something easy or natural. You've spent three years investing your time and money into this area with only the very unrealistic possibility that you become a very successful martial arts dojo owner. Whereas when it comes to gaming and streaming, you don't need to invest three years of your time and talent into trying to make it as a streamer. You can start today. You can start right now, even if you've never touched a video game in your life. You can just turn on a stream, play a video game for the first time, and maybe find yourself an audience. It just it doesn't make any sense really what his point is, other than maybe just thinking that gamers spend 12 hours a day only playing games in isolation in a basement with the lights off and shit-stained underwear doing nothing else. Which might be true for some people, but overall it's still just a really fucking dumb point to make because it can be boiled down to apply to every fucking field. Sports, acting, writing, all of it is all by Joe's criteria here a waste of time because it's not guaranteeing you money. And you could read a book, you could write books for three years and then in three years still not have a career out of it and just be reading and writing fucking books. But would you necessarily vilify people who like to read and write? Probably not. Same for sports. You can play basketball from the fucking time you're born right out of the womb. You can start dribbling a basketball all the way until the time you graduate college and might not make it into the NBA. Most likely won't make it into the NBA. So was all of that time playing basketball wasted since you didn't make any money and now you have no career in this thing you've dedicated 24 years of your life to? Eh, probably not because you've likely enjoyed it and you likely just enjoy the sport as a whole. It's just a stupid criteria to make it where something has to guarantee you money to have it be worth your time. I don't think that's a good way of looking at things. I think that's fucking stupid. And he chose the actual worst target for his example because this is the only fucking field in the world where you literally can make a career out of nothing by just being mediocre or just being entertaining while playing a game by turning on a stream, which is free to do. The software is all free. You can literally just start a stream right now and might just find yourself a career tomorrow. And for some reason, Joe chose this one as like a dead-end hobby. Literally the only fucking hobby that can stay a hobby and give you a career. Whereas every other hobby, in order to make a career out of it, you need to turn it into a full-time job and commitment. When it comes to gaming, you can literally keep that a hobby and just stream sometimes and find yourself a financial, uh, financially viable career. But I think this has all gotten blown way out of proportion. People are treating this like this was some kind of nuclear bomb on gaming. Like all of a sudden, all the gamers out there are just going to throw down their controller like Joe Rogan said, it's a waste of time. Pff, it's a waste of time. It's not that big of a deal. It's just a kind of harmless, stupid take. That's genuinely just about all there is to it. That's about it. See ya.